In John 15, 5, Jesus says, I am the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me, and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Each week, the vine is a worship opportunity brought to you by St. Andrew United Methodist Church to help you stay connected to Jesus Christ, who is the true vine. We hope that you're blessed by our time together this week.
Hi, I want to welcome you to this week's edition of The Vine. I'm Pastor Jonathan, and we're glad that you're here. More than anything else, I would love to get connected with you. I want to invite you to send me a message through our church Facebook page, or you can message me directly at jonathan.wvumc at gmail.com. I also want to invite you to visit our church's webpage where you can find different things about our church, our ministries, events, and opportunities, ways that you can get engaged. And on our homepage, you'll find an opportunity to partner with us in ministry by financially supporting the ministries of our church through online giving. We want to thank you for your generosity and for your gifts. And we want to let you know that each and every time that you give, it goes towards our mission to make disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world. Before we dig into this week's message, I'd like to take just a moment to go to God in prayer. Merciful God, we thank you, we praise you in these moments. We thank you for all that you've done and for all that you are, the ways that you meet us in the broken places of our lives to give us hope, joy, and peace through your Son, Jesus Christ. I pray for each and every person who is watching today that in these moments that you will enlighten our hearts and our minds. Help us to sense your presence and to know your love and help us to hear your word anew. Lead us and guide us by the power and the presence of your Holy Spirit. And it's in Christ that we pray these things. Amen. One Sabbath, when Jesus went to share a meal in the home of one of the leaders of the Pharisees, they were watching him closely. A man suffering from an abnormal swelling of the body was there. Jesus asked the lawyers and Pharisees, Does the law allow healing on the Sabbath or not? But they said nothing. Jesus took hold of the sick man, cured him, and then let him go. He said to them, Suppose your child or ox fell into a ditch on the Sabbath day. Wouldn't you immediately pull it out? But they had no response. When Jesus noticed how the guests sought out the best seats at the table, he told them a parable. When someone invites you to a wedding celebration, don't take your seat in the place of honor. Someone more highly regarded than you could have been invited by your host. The host who invited both of you will come and say to you, give your seat to this other person. Embarrassed, you will take your seat in the least important place. Instead, when you receive an invitation, go and sit in the least important place. When your host approaches you, then he will say, Friend, move up here to a better seat. Then you will be honored in the presence of all your fellow guests. All who lift themselves up will be brought low, and those who make themselves low will be lifted up. Then Jesus said to the person who had invited him, When you host a lunch or dinner, don't invite your friends your brothers and sisters, your relatives, or rich neighbors. If you do, they will invite you in return, and that will be your reward. Instead, when you give a banquet, invite the poor, crippled, lame, and blind, and you will be blessed because they can't repay you. Instead, you will be repaid when the just are resurrected. In today's scripture lesson, we find Jesus at a banquet. And the author, Luke, uses all kinds of interchangeable words for banquet, dinner, a meal. And it's pretty obvious that there are people who are gathered together at the home of a prestigious religious leader. And while they're there, it's a Sabbath day, and Jesus sees a man who has dropsy which is a condition that is really about uh, 
retaining an unusual amount of water and it causes swelling. This man would have been considered a sinner. He would have been considered unclean by the standards of the day. And so Jesus looks around and he asks, is it okay to heal this man on the Sabbath? There's absolutely no response. Jesus chooses to heal the man either way. Then Jesus asks, is it okay to heal your child or to even take care of property like an oxen on the Sabbath? And still the religious leaders have no response. The second episode in this scene deals with uh, the idea of um, where you should sit when you're invited to come to a banquet, specifically a wedding banquet, a similar situation where Jesus finds himself in that moment. In Jesus' world, it was set up in a system of honor and shame. The best way to translate that into our modern world, it's uh, I'll scratch your back if you scratch mine kind of situation. People would invite honorable people to come to their home for a banquet. They would make them the guest of honor. And it would be expected for the guests to say good things about the host, to repay honor, and to bring gifts. It was definitely something where the host would ultimately benefit from the situation. Jesus tells everyone, using conventional Jewish wisdom, that when they're invited to such an occasion, they should not sit in the place of greatest honor. Otherwise, they might be embarrassed when they have to be reseated to the place of lowest honor. Instead, they should start at the lowest place with the hope that they might get a better seat in the end. We might think of this as sitting down in coach and hoping that a, a flight attendant will come and invite us to come and sit in first class rather than being removed from first class and seated in coach. And then the third episode within this scene is where Jesus directly addresses the Pharisee who has invited him to his home. Jesus explains that we should not invite people who are going to repay us with honor, not necessarily the people who are going to help us advance socially, but to invite the people who are lowly, the people who are marginalized, the people who are sick, the people who would be considered sinners because they didn't necessarily fit in. These were social outcasts. This would have been really unusual for this audience to hear teaching like this. So strange. Why in the world would you invite people who are poor, crippled, lame, and blind? And Jesus explains that the reward doesn't take place here on earth, but that it takes place in the afterlife. Now, we could easily uh, tie all of these three episodes together and look for the common denominator. There's really not a whole lot of mystery here. It seems that Jesus is talking about welcome, and inclusion. But are these the same thing? Is welcoming and including others the same? If we go back to that very first episode, the story of the man with dropsy, what we know about the ancient world is that pious Jewish people were supposed to invite anyone and everyone to come into their home for a banquet. If you were among the poor and the cripple and the lame and the blind, if you were put into this category of sinner, then you were allowed to come in, you were allowed to eat, and it was considered a righteous deed, a merciful act on behalf of 
the host. But such people weren't allowed to sit down at the table. They were only allowed to kind of stand or sit at the perimeter of the room. And so this man with dropsy would have been welcome to come in and eat. But he would not have been included because he was not given a seat at the table. Sometimes we use these words interchangeably. We talk about being welcoming and inclusive. And in my years of pastoral ministry, I've encountered so many different churches. I've been invited to lots of different churches and, and had the opportunity to engage in, in ministry with other pastors. And I have never once been to a church that didn't describe themselves as welcoming. Most of the churches that I've ever gone into were welcoming. They were glad to see a new face. But we, being welcoming isn't necessarily the same thing as being inclusive. Welcoming is when we're okay with other people coming into the same space where we are, the space where we've gathered. But being inclusive is when we make room for them where we sit, when we take time to truly be invested in who they are, asking questions, getting to know them. In this story, the man with the illness, the man with dropsy, he was welcome, but he wasn't included. Jesus is really teaching about the kingdom of God, the nature of the kingdom of God. And what he's telling us is that it's not enough to be welcoming. That as a people of God, we are also called by Christ to be inclusive. You know, sometimes in church, at dinners, at church events, it's so easy for us to stay clustered into our little groups. And we get excited when we see new faces. We see someone we don't recognize. We see someone who comes to an event or shows up for a worship service. Someone that we've never seen before. And we might turn to our friends and say, who is that? Do you know their name? But unfortunately, so many times that's where it stops. We stay clustered in our little group. We might be welcoming. We might be okay with them being in our space. But how do we do with creating space for them to sit at our table? Are we willing to break up our little groups? Are we willing to move away from our little social circles to be inclusive? To build relationships? To make connections with others? And yet, if we continue reading this entire scene, we find there's a fourth episode where Jesus tells another parable. In verse 15, it says, When one of the dinner guests heard Jesus' remarks, he said to Jesus, Happy are those who will feast in God's kingdom. Jesus replied, A certain man hosted a large dinner and invited many guests. When it was time for the dinner to begin, he sent his servant to tell the invited guests, Come, the dinner is now ready. One by one, they all began to make excuses. The first one told him, I bought a farm and must go see it. Please excuse me. Another said, I bought five teams of oxen and I'm going to check on them. Please excuse me. Another said, I just got married, so I can't come. When he returned, the servant reported these excuses to his master. The master of the house became angry and said to his servant, Go quickly to the city's streets, the busy ones, and the side streets, and bring the poor, crippled, blind, and lame. The servant said, Master, your instructions have been followed, and there is still room. The master said to the servant, Go to the highways and the back alleys and urge people to come in so that my house will be filled. I tell you, not one of those who were invited 
will taste my dinner. So here we have the fourth episode where Jesus teaches us that it's not just enough to be welcoming. We also have to be inclusive. But in this fourth part, Jesus teaches us that it's not enough to be inclusive. We also have to be proactive. We can't just get up from our table and and go and, and build relationships with others. We actually have to go out. We actually have to go out of our space, out of our comfort zone, to connect with people who are often marginalized and disenfranchised. As a pastor, I have encouraged uh, the congregations that I have served to connect with people, to invite people to come to church. And one of the most common excuses that I've heard is, well, pastor, I just don't know anyone who doesn't go to church. I don't really have a social network outside of our church. And here Jesus is calling us to build bigger tables to move away from these small tables that are filled with familiar faces, to go out into the world and to build relationships with people who seemingly are rejected by other social settings, rejected by our society in other ways, to go to people who might be outcasts, invite them to come and sit with us. Christ is calling us to be welcoming, inclusive, and proactive. Which means being okay and excited about everyone who shows up. Regardless of how much they are like us or how much different they might be from us. Christ is calling us to be inclusive. Which means making space at the table for them to sit down. And Christ is calling us to be proactive which means that we also have to get up from the table. We also have to leave our space to go and build relationships with people who feel like that they have never been invited in the first place. This is what the kingdom of God looks like. This is what Jesus invites us to do. Jesus invites us to build bigger tables. I want to encourage you to take some time and think about how often you're willing to leave your comfort zone, to leave your safe space. How often are you willing to get up from a a table filled with familiar faces to go build relationships with people who feel like they might not belong anywhere in the world? How are we doing as a congregation of making anyone and everyone feel welcome and included? Are we going out of our way to find them? Are we going out of our way to build a community of faith that is diverse? A community of faith where everyone feels like they have a place, where they have a voice, where they are viewed with dignity and respect. Because Jesus tells us that the kingdom of God is as simple as the ways that we choose to sit down and have a meal, the people that we surround ourselves with. Christ is calling us to build bigger tables. Let's pray. Loving God, I pray for each person who's listening right now. I pray that you'll stir within our hearts that we would be willing to leave the safe places that we have created to build relationships, to build bridges and make connections with the folks in our community around us who might feel like they have nowhere to go. Folks who feel like they have no family, no friends. Help us to let them know that they are welcome and included. Lead us and guide us by the power of your Holy Spirit. And we pray all of these things in Christ's name. Amen. We hope to see you again next time. Take care and God bless.